Hi guys, April's over, and it's time to get everyone up to date with the latest happenings in the woodworking world. So let's get started. Popular Woodworking has released a third edition of their I Can Do That book series. It's got 10 new projects, which they say are great for anyone looking for a weekend woodworking projects. To celebrate, they offered to give a copy away to someone who left a comment on their announcement blog post. Of course, this generated a lot of the usual ooh, ooh, me, me responses, but a few were more creative, including, well, shucks, I'm a woodworker and I have weekends. Maybe I can do that. I can use the inspiration and a reason to hide in the basement. And if I discover I can't do something in this book, do I get a refund or do I need a lawyer for that? Speaking of snarky comments, Popular Woodworking has hired a new guy to take that abuse. David Lyle learned woodworking while he was pastoring a church in Kentucky, and he says his passion was stoked by the personalities he discovered on YouTube. It's a clear reference to Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal, I think, because our projects have been used to stoke fires and workshops all over the world for years. As online content director, David's responsible for the magazine's entire digital footprint, including their website, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, where anyone who deals with a lot of internet comments knows He'll be spending a fair amount of his day deleting vulgarities, fending off the odd insult, and declining invitations to stick various objects in unspeakable places. So enjoy that new job, David. Speaking of changes, one of Woodworking's most prolific bloggers is retiring. After 22 years, Graham McCullough has published his 817th and final article on his Shortcuts blog. Graham also contributed articles to several woodworking magazines, and he's written several books, some of which are among my favorites. Now, in announcing his retirement, Graham revealed that he is battling cancer, but the outlook is very positive, and we wish him many years of rest, relaxation, and general retirement bliss. Of course, just because the writing has ended doesn't mean that massive database of woodworking knowledge he created is going away anytime soon. So if you've never checked out his website, you'll find it in a link below this video. Speaking of woodworkers overcoming health issues, WBTV News out of Charlotte, North Carolina, recently reported on the inspiring story of Billy Milburn. Billy lost his vision to macular degeneration beginning at age 43, but he was undeterred. He went to a special school for those with vision challenges, and he learned wood turning. Now he does not only turning, but he works with a table saw, a planer, all sorts of shop machines. His message for others with disabilities are, if you think you can do something, just be careful and do it. Being careful is key, of course. Mr. Milburn recently severely injured his thumbs in a planer accident. If you'd like to watch the full news report, you find a link in the notes below. Speaking of challenged craftsmen, the Craftsman Tool brand has had its shares of challenges recently. The former powerhouse brand that Bob Vila sold to us for years has been sold itself. That's right, Sears has sold Craftsman to none other than Stanley Black & Decker. This is a $900 million deal, and it's just the latest in $3.4 billion of acquisitions that Stanley and Black & Decker have made since the two companies merged in 2010. Of course, Sears will continue to sell Craftsman tools in their stores and Kmart, as long as those stores exist, but expect to see that Craftsman logo popping up in other retailers all over the place. Speaking of tools, there's some new ones on the market, and I thought they'd be worth mentioning. For information on these tools, I'll put links to their websites in the notes below the video. First up, Rockler has introduced a new member to their Dustrite line of tools. It's a shop vacuum hose reel which mounts to a wall and holds up to 40 feet of hose. And it has a knob, tensioning knob, that allows you to control the rate at which it unwinds. While it does use the smaller inch and a half hose, I'd recommend using a more powerful vacuum for it because that's a lot of hose to pull air through. If you've got a vacuum with a two and a half inch port, that plugs right into the side of the reel. Then you just turn your vacuum on and leave it there. You grab the hose and you unreel just as much as you need and you go. The reel itself retails for $150 and the hose is about $250 a foot. Also new in tools, Festool has released a set of clever connectors that are designed to fit into mortises cut by their domino machine. And they're used to create furniture that can be assembled and disassembled with just a hex wrench. The convenience of such a product is undeniable, but the price is something to consider. This new connector will set you back about five bucks per joint. They don't even have that fancy green paint on it. 
Finally, no, this isn't a bandsaw. This is Grizzly's 15 inch open end belt sander. They claim it provides the features of an industrial machine, but in a smaller 24 by 29 inch footprint. It's five horsepower motor can sand a 30 inch wide panel in two passes at up to 32 feet per minute. And its features include pneumatic belt tensioning and tracking, and even disc brakes for emergency stopping power. But this beast doesn't come cheap. It retails for nearly five grand. Well, that's it for this month's woodworking news with snarky comments. It was kind of short, but we're gonna have to wrap it up. The new issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal will be out shortly, so head over to stumpynubs.com and check that out. It's a great place to sit back and have your cold one, because you've earned it, my friend.